Welcome, GMB pros. Welcome, everyone that's here live. Um, Ramona, I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, I apologize. Uh, those that are catching the replay, I appreciate you guys as always. Um, this week's uh, GMB pros will probably be a little late. William uh, is traveling and where he's at, he doesn't have great internet. So we might be a little slow on putting up the replays. But um, I want to, uh, again, remind everyone of the um, goal of the GMB pros, right? Um, it is twofold. One is to help your agency grow within itself, getting more clients, or two is helping get better results for your clients. And that's our ultimate goal. We do that by bringing uh, our regular guests, regular family members like Riz to kind of share different pillars of marketing, whether it be the business side, whether it be content, whether it be on page, off page, um, softwares that help us, tools, right, that help us. Um, and then there's also a traffic pillar of SEO, marketing, um, that is very crucial for Google to get awareness and engagement with Google. So um, today is like a Q&A with CTR updates, answer any questions you may have, set up maybe questions um, from time to time. Uh, I think we had CTR of fire last time, I guess, with Riz. Um, that um, is pretty, pretty in depth. Um, I didn't even realize you can do that much stuff with that particular piece of tool, which was pretty, pretty cool. Um, so that's the ultimate goal, guys. It's driven by you guys to help you. It's kind of from my perspective, like what I experienced, and I like to share it with you guys. With that said, Riz, welcome, man. Thank you for hey, hey, being good to here. be back. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We were just ch chatting a little bit. It felt like we hadn't um, talked in a while, but it, you know, sometimes we hit each other up during the week or in between the sessions. But um, Riz, for those that don't know you, uh, if you can kind of give us a recap where you're at, because I know you're in a different part of the world. Um, you know, kind of your background, where you've been and where you're at right now. Yeah, so I'm from Australia originally. Um, I focus on Google Maps stuff, CTR, um, optimization, ranking local businesses, um, and tying in all the aspects of what you need to rank, not just sort of focusing on one area. Uh, in saying that, though, I do run a CTR program, CTR Driver, uh, which is for maps listings uh, it's the first android based sort of mobile ctr system got all the native apps and it does driving directions to the business but today we're here to talk about ctr in general um i did have a couple of points written down but if we've got any questions about anything related to things we've spoken about in previous calls or anything maybe we haven't addressed yet feel free to put them in the chat and we can get we can go through them but i wanted to talk today about what to do if your gmb is not ranking as well as you thought it would or sort of expectation wise things aren't performing as well maybe you've taken on a new client it's been a couple of months and you've gone through the initial things and maybe your strategy's off or the com competition's more competitive than you thought. Um, what are some things that you can sort of reflect, um, audit? How can you see if there's either been something you've missed when you first started setting up the campaign or if things have changed as you've gone along and as a result, the competition is more competitive or anything else so i wrote a couple of things down but i guess this is more focused for a business that ranks gets inquiries but maybe it doesn't rank too well you've seen an increase in the past couple of months but it's sort of been stagnant um maybe you think you've done the setup 
the optimization, the foundational work, your press release, your citations, you've done a bit of on-page to the website. And I kind of want to sort of go back to step one, which for me is always checking the proximity, checking the competitor's rank, because quite often Google gives different businesses, different areas, pockets of businesses where they're going to rank. And let's... And this is key, as Riz is setting this up, guys, this is where a lot of mistakes that I see are made, right? They think that no matter what CTR, right? Um, CTR booster, agency assassin, uh, Riz's one, my personal one, it doesn't really matter which one. If like that essential research is not done, right? The competitors, the proximity, what Google is showing for that particular keyword in that particular area, because there is a huge, huge difference where Google, no matter what the 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 niche is, they're like, nope, you're staying in this this area. I'm not expanding. If you look at all the um the other competitors, and you do like you watch it on the heat map, you'll see it just blocks like they don't let them out of those different blocks so that that is a uh, such thing that exists for sure yeah so hopefully you guys can see my screen this is just a random law firm in new york and as you can see here if we click on one of the listings you know it's quite centered around that main area and if we go back, we can see looking at all of the different grids, it's it's the same pattern. Like there, as you see here, it starts to go down to the lower areas, which are green. So that shows that the business is located in that lower area. These guys, same thing. I would assume the business is located down here. And then you're just getting that sort of a tiny section of the grid. And we all know how small Manhattan is in terms of size. The fact that you're only getting such a small, tiny little area, and now we're getting down to businesses that don't rank, but it's the same thing over and over. And if we if we go to a business, and let's say we go up here to the north, we click on one of these rankers, we'll see the same thing. In the north section, the businesses only rank in the top half of the grid. Even these guys who rank number four, their ranks only very, very slight. So looking at this, it's pretty obvious that if your client is at the top of the map, you're not, it's not possible to rank in the bottom because every, even the top guy who has a huge ones across the board down here, 20 plus. So if you're seeing advancement and movements out and improvements in rank, but not to the sort of, size or expectations that you initially had always the first thing to check is is this and all of the tools will have this feature um, and you can really sort of zone in on different areas and if we go to the bottom we'll see the same thing it's just you know that very competitive financial district of manhattan you can see that these businesses have like a couple of squares of green all of them, just because of how competitive that area is. I mean, I've never, I've never seen something this bad. That's actually crazy, but these guys do them better. But all of them just have like a couple of dots. So if you're in this position, check this out. Check out the rank of the competitors. And if you do see something troubling like this, it's time to have a conversation with the client about expectations, um, opening a second business, getting a virtual office, getting some pin drops, you know, anything you can do to get a rank in an area where it's too far away from you proximity wise to rank. So if somebody gets a client like this, Riz, what is kind of like your first couple steps or analysis or what is the expectation that you go over with the client? So if I, I mean, 
if you're getting areas where the grid is very small, the green section of the grid, then you have to show that to the, the client and basically explain to them that this is all that Google's rewarding and no SEO company can guarantee or give you long lasting results that are better than what the competitors have. Like, sure, you can maybe do some tricks and, you know, we've all seen stories and maybe done it ourselves of ranking statewide or nationwide for a competitive keyword. But in 100% of the cases, it gets pulled down eventually. So if you're trying to grow a business and build a brand, like most lawyers and sort of professional businesses are, then you have to showcase what the competitors are doing, how they're getting the benefit and what benefit they're getting. So where are they ranking? Because you can't get better than the best. Even if you become the best, you're not going to suddenly get twice as much distance as the number one or number two. And I guess that in these areas where it is competitive and it is a small area, I suppose emphasizing on the volume and if it's high competition, it's obviously competitive meaning it's profitable so if businesses that are already there are making a lot of money it's obviously worth it for your client to be there so you might only be able to rank them in a two mile radius but that might generate them 50 calls a week so you have to sort of explain and get the get your point across in, with those terms i guess it comes down to showing that the value that you're providing to the business is more than what you're charging and going in with huge expectations is never the answer like saying you can do stuff that's not possible is what gives seo a bad name 100 percent, 100 percent. so i guess like you've had a look at the rank uh maybe the competitors are ranking better than you, most of the competitors. So you've got some rank, but you've seen the proximity is not crazy. Like all the other guys that rank well, they have huge grids, twice the distance of what you're ranking for. Um, the next thing I'd be doing is checking the, doing an audit of the Google business profiles. So I got one second. So guys, this is like what I call like the best practices, right? You take a look at the grid, uh, you see the competition, right? And then you're able to kind of go from there and adjust. Make sure like once you see in this, you adjust your expectation. Don't tell a customer you can do um, like pull this off when you can't based on what you see in front of your data, right? Exactly. Like it's quite easy to bullshit customers. They most of the time have no clue what they're talking about, but you, it's only going to hurt you at the end of the day. Like you're going to lose reputation. People are going to drop you. You're going to lose a lot of clients as you go on. And, you know, it's quite difficult and expensive to get a client. So my philosophy is try and keep them as long as you can. And it might take you longer to get a client by being real with them. But once you do, you won't lose them because they'll see the, the improvements and, from there, you, you'll build a long, long-term partnership. So having a look at some maps, um, these are just the top four businesses that were, were ranking. So the first thing I'm going to look at is how, is there a keyword in the room in the business name? Now you might've already done this initially when you signed up the client, maybe you didn't, but it's, it's good to check again. Like if you're, if you're stuck for rankings, then it's something in the process you're doing that's not that's missing. So, you know, starting again, doing the basic steps, the audits is always a good idea because things do change and Google updates and rewards certain things. And maybe one one day Google wasn't rewarding keywords in business names and the next day they are. So check that out. Law offices. This one says law group. This one says law firm. This one says law firm. This one says law, this one says law offices. So if you see your client just says their name and like their name and something or PC, you know that that's a reason 
why potentially they're not ranking because they don't have a keyword that every other competitor has in their in their title. And something like law that's so sort of synonymous with the name of the business, I think you'd be pretty safe to change the name, build some citations, update the business name, try build some citations with the new name first to sort of corroborate that with Google. But um, that's clearly in this category, having law as the keyword in the name is very important. And then checking the review count, the photo count. That's two things I'm always going to do. So we use Plepper. Uh, if you haven't heard of Plepper, it is fantastic. It's a Google Chrome extension. It's also a website. Um, gives you all the information about the Google business. Fantastic. And it gives you the image count. So if we go to the front, we can go 48, 36, doesn't say for that one, 212, 34, 12. So, you know, you, you should see some sort of consistency with the images. Generally, the more images a business has, they rank slightly better, but it's not always, not always the case. And the review count to see what how you guys are for reviews. So you can see these guys all have quite a lot of reviews. They're ranging between 94 and 772. So if you've got 50 reviews, again, you can sort of start to see why you're not getting the results that you expected. And I, I think something to, to note is, again, with the, that, that client expectation, like as long as you're getting improvements and as long as you have a roadmap and you know where you're going and where you need to be, clients are happy to come along for the journey and sort of stay with you. If you're keeping them up to date and you have a clear roadmap and a plan for what's necessary, working with businesses to get the goals achieved is always beneficial for everybody. Like we can't go out and get a hundred reviews for our clients but we can help implement systems in our clients' businesses that will generate the reviews over a longer period of time to help catch up with review counts. And we can consistently upload photos on their profile to increase the amount of photos. And if we know what numbers we need to work towards, then it makes the journey so much easier. It makes the monthly deliverables so much easier because you know what you have to do month on month to get the results. So checking the review count, checking the photo count. Um, if you check, we speak a lot about the products. So it's hard to show these days because often they're not showing them. But products on the Google business listing is something that's important. Your services as a business are your products. So adding the services as products on your Google business listing and then linking them across to the internal page on your website is a beneficial tactic. So like this, like aluminium pool fencing. And then this links to the page on my website about aluminium pool fencing and the same with glass pool fencing and timber pool fencing. So you could have criminal law and you could have car accident lawyer and you could have, I don't know, insurance lawyer and link them across. Because any of those inconsistencies between you and the competitors is gonna hurt, is gonna hurt your, your ranking achievements. So if you still guys, have if you have any question, uh, please let let us know. You know, we're actually showing you the back end of the GMB, right? The edit of products, edit of service, so you guys can see. You definitely want to 
put that in there, right? Um, with and again, when it comes to keywords, you guys know that I mean entities, variations, um, you know, NLP keywords, uh, you know, some semantics, uh, SEO in there to try to connect the dots and let Google know in every area what you're about, where you at, what keyword you're going after. Definitely important, no doubt. And linking services to pages and linking your Google Maps to your website is just trust signals. And Google works on trust signals. The more Google trusts you and the more transparent you are with Google, the more they're going to reward you because the more they, they trust your website. But something that's super important more now more than ever, I think in the past 12 months, is the review velocity. So how many reviews you're getting versus the competitors. So if you are if you take the last 30 days, and this might backfire completely, uh, I'm going to do a live test. I like playing with fire. Um, or we saw these by newest. I'm going to assume that we'll see quite a lot of reviews for the guys that rank towards the top. So we got six days a week, two weeks, four weeks, a month, a week three weeks, a month, not so many. And then here we go, two months, right. two months, a month, well, that's not in order. Anyway, review velocity is very important. We've done tests on it before. Um, the more reviews you're getting, if you're getting more reviews than your competitors in a certain in the same time frame, then you're going to improve in rank quicker than them. No doubt. That's kind of some initial things. Um, another thing that is very important would be to check your NAP consistency. So if you've, you know, maybe the business had a different name in the past or a different address and citations have been built with the wrong address or the wrong, the old name, old phone number, cleaning them up is very important. So you can either go in and edit them if you've got the login details or you can just make a new one. I, it's not something people talk about a lot, a lot, but you can just go in and make a new listing on the same website and nine times out of 10, Google's going to just reward the new page over the old page. It's not the best situation, but if you can't have access, if you don't have access and you can't contact them, just make a new one on the same website with the new details and it'll index and it'll kick the old one out of the index and Google will prioritize the new link. And building more citations is something you can always do. Like you can never have enough citations, you know, no, not all of them index, not all of them are going to be picked up by Google or by, by SEO tools. So constantly building out citations. We build citations every month for clients. It's sort of just an ongoing process. Especially the, the big ones, right? You want to get those off right away because you'll be able to link them yeah, definitely. Ema, right. Like at, at this point, if you're sort of if you're questioning why the business isn't ranking and you haven't built citations initially, well, maybe you need to go back and watch some other calls. But I think build your top citations initially. But if months down the track you're not getting more improvements on what you thought, maybe you missed the NAP consistency, or maybe any one of these things we just spoke about was missed in the initial order, which is very easy to do. If you, you should be running CTR, and if you're not, why not? And if you tried it and it hasn't worked, 
then it's the strategy that you're using. I mean, all the tools as well, but it's mainly the strategy. And if you're running CTR and you're not you're running branded searches, you have to run branded searches, have to, have to, have to, like 30 to 50% of your traffic should be coming from branded searches. So that means that, you know, 30 to 70% of your CTR should be coming from branded searches, depending on what your initial search branded to target ratio is and how much, how many clicks you're getting initially. And 100% yeah, 100, 100 remember guys, the, the SEO is what I consider the five pillars, right? On, off, uh, content, backlinks and that fifth one that i've added is search definitely makes a difference big time you need engagement google and google maps there user-based platforms so like in all of the leaks that came out earlier in the year they all spoke about engagement users ctr all that stuff as being sort of direct ranking signals so if you're not, if it's not working for you, then your numbers are off. Try up, try add some brand, up the brand if you're not doing that sort of 30 to 50 percent. And something we've spoken about, and I think briefly set up on CTR Booster before, but referral branded, uh, referral traffic, referral CTR. So I was doing some. research on referral CTR and I just pulled up some websites Walmart as an example 6.29% of their traffic is referral traffic this is a plumbing website in Australia 2.58% of their website traffic is referral this is law firm in Los Angeles. 32% of their traffic is referral. And we've got another law firm and they've got 21.6% of all traffic is referral traffic. So if you're looking at your metrics and your referral traffic is zero, then maybe we can try and up that. And, you know, that was a big range, 2.6 or whatever, 2.5 to 31%, but having a few percent is better than having none and but guys uh uh riz just to interrupt you real quick sorry riz actually went through this on an old video so if you need help with that within ctr he literally went step by step by step on how to set up the ctr what kind of link to use because it's just not any link you know you want to once you go to that referral link you want that domain to be obvious especially with ctr booster and get that referral link over. Yeah, check the old video out. We did it a couple of months ago. Uh, it was the CTR Booster walkthrough. And some things I'll say that are in the video, uh, you've got two types of referral traffic. You've got your branded referral traffic, which is your press releases, your citations, your social medias, your branded web 2.0s, that sort of thing. And then you've got your target sort of keyword rich campaign referral traffic which is your guest posts your niche inserts uh made wikipedia links brand non non-branded press releases things that rank for terms and essentially what you're doing is you're finding websites that have a link to your site that rank for different keywords whether that's your brand name if they're citations and press releases or whether it's blogs, questions, queries that your guest posts rank for, finding those terms and then clicking on that website on Google and going to your blog or your money page through that other website. And that's what we call referral traffic. So it can be social media, Facebook, Instagram bio, Twitter. It can be... Reddit, 
you can have LinkedIn, it can be guest posts like all your Yahoo or your AP news links from your press releases, niche inserts, any link that you guys build web 2.0s, driving traffic to them and then clicking through to your website, that's referral traffic. And I mean, that's sort of everything I'd be looking at. Like if, if, if you've done all of that and you're not ranking, um, yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you really the paid call. <laughs> yeah. I would do if, if even after these basic like best practice, if you're still not ranking, I definitely would take a look at the website and make sure that the GMB is connected, right? Um, we we showed an example here that we didn't touch the website. We, I'm sorry, we didn't touch the profile, but we touched the website and we saw a little bump. So make sure you connect those, the keywords, the services, the products, the categories on your website, like it's on your GMB and then connect the two. Make it obvious. Don't confuse it. Don't confuse like, keyword modifiers like lawyers in New York. If they're in New York and they type in lawyers, Google's going to now know. It's not like before, like you needed to tell Google like, hey, I'm here and I'm looking for this. Google's become a lot better. And those geos, they do help. They do, you know, you can, a lot of, you know, SEOs like will put that and look, I'm ranking for this, but just make it that money keyword, make it that, those main keywords because now the geo is more like a modifier, right? Modifier of the keyword is not necessarily the keyword. So if you set up your website in, in that manner, where like, look, I'm prominent in New York or Australia, like here's the cities, things to do, why people come here, top things to do. Okay. Now Google will say, okay, got you. You're in this area. And then you go in and then modify like your services for those particular keywords, whether it be pool, fencing, plumber, what, what not. Then they get, ah, okay, now I got your keyword. Now I know where you're at. And they'll associate the two and give you that boost. I can set it better. Questions, guys? Make sure you put them in the chat. You know, we can get to your questions. I don't see any at the moment. But yeah, uh, I know Riz just kind of wanted to cover the basics, give you the 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 back end, like with your products and services. And then a lot of stuff may seem very elementary, but guys, like uh, last week, right? Guy needs help, uh, cleaning service. Um, and he is like, Hey, I'm not ranking. I go into it. There's not even a site map submitted into Google Search Council, right? You got to get those basic stuff done. Um, another guy started to set the Google Search Council, but it wasn't completely done, right? So, like, you have no data to go off of. And that's why, like, kind of Riz went through, like, hey, guys, cover the basics, right? There's a reason why Google now you can tie your... Uh, profiles onto the back end of your profile. There's a reason why all that, you know, you could do that with schema again, tying the website um, with the profile, Google map profile, all that does matter. And it's not like one thing is going to shoot you up. Don't get it mixed. There's no really silver bullet. I think it's a multiple, like uh, Lee taught me this is uh, diversify your ranking factors. Right. So if there is even if there is an update, yeah, you might drop, but just leave it alone. It'll come back up. Right. Or you won't drop as low. Or let's say after all the dust is settled, you do drop like you're not so far down that you can you can tweak a little things. And again, you're diversifying your ranking factors and you're right back up. But I think the message that Rizis was trying to point is to like, hey, Take care of the basics. It this does not work if you don't, right? The profile optimization, the on side of your page, the more you do there, like Lee has taught me, the less you have to do off page, right? 
fine. I mean, this site, the AM, the pool fencing site that we're tracking, um, since I don't think I've touched this since May. Like, if you look at the ranking, we really, we started ranking March, but it's continuing to get better. And even the last scan between the 7th of July and the 21st of July, it's just all twos basically now. And for, for the main the main term for fencing Brisbane, which I wasn't even ever trying to rank for, in the past month, we've gone from this to this with no additional work, just tweaking the CTR numbers. And as I said last time, in June, we stopped the CTR. And we've since started again very low, like two clicks a day, branded search only. But this is just a flow on from, you know, again, getting the edges there, starting to rank better. This is just a flow on from all the foundational work we've done. And nothing special has been happening to this website. Like cost wise, for us, of what we've actually done, probably just like a couple of hundred dollars. Let's be real. Um, we bought a $50 press release on Fiverr. We got some citations. We ran some CTR. Clients have left some reviews. Maybe we built two or three backlinks, like paid backlinks other than web citations and web 2.0s and just built up the foundations and we're still reaping the rewards months later after, after not actually doing anything to the website. So there's foundational work, it's so important. I mean, you get this result after months of work and you're very happy. After three weeks of doing nothing, it's even more it's even more joy, joyful. <laughs> yeah, well, for sure, for sure. And like fencing Brisbane is like the main term. Like there's thousands of searches for this and we're ranking pretty well. I never expected to rank for that term. So Google's liking what we do. And I mean, everything we've spoken about, everything we've done in this listing we've spoken about, on these calls. What's quite interesting to see is, you know, follow the process, follow the steps. And if you're in a competitive industry, you might have to do more, but it's the same steps. It's just more of the same steps. It's not more steps. It's just doing more of everything. Yep. Any qu questions, guys, as we close it down here, coming to an end? questions and peter i'll get you the the youtube on it just look at mine or william's youtube uh my va throws these replays up on mine or on the um i believe william's also putting them in the back end of the uh gmb pros but for sure on youtube questions questions i don't see any Good sign. Anything else you wanted to cover? Um, that pretty much summed it up for me. Um, if there's not really too much else that I'd be looking at, to be perfectly honest. What are we doing next for ANS pool fencing? I guess trying to increase the glass pool fencing. That dropped a little bit. So trying to get that back up, running some CTR for that and seeing how that goes. Other than that, everything's running pretty smoothly. So I don't think there's too much to report there, but maybe yeah. next claim, next call, we can chat about, you know, company branding, um, less on the GMB side and more on the sort of entity building side. 
uh, like do, do you deal with anything with stacks uh in your process Riz? because i know no, somebody no. was asking me about stacks you don't do the stacks anymore okay. uh, i really just keep it simple these days got it long page that citations, press release, reviews, CTR, and that's that's really all we all we do. Got it. All right, guys. With that being said, I think we'll call it for today. Um, Riz will be back in a couple of weeks. Um, Peter, do you do ads to get GMB greens? You do any ads, Peter? I mean, uh, Riz. Peter's asking. Uh, Running ads, not for ranking, not to get an increase in ranking. I have heard a lot of people talking about running maybe Facebook ads for increased CTR for specific location traffic, but nothing that I've ever done. I think that bot traffic, if done well, is really all you need. Yeah. Now that is a strategy, Peter. Um, I know um, Harry uses it and he uses a um, like long tail so it doesn't get used. But the fact that he has money on there, not very much, but he does have like 100 or 200 bucks on there. Um, and he that is a method that people do use. And I've seen some people be successful with it. Um but that that is a method. I've tried full optimization, but the GMB is still shows orange. Okay, so we kind of went through this a little bit at the beginning of the call, Peter, like looking at the competition, reviews, right? Uh, services and, and, and products. If they're still showing like yellowish, um, make sure you tie it in with the website, make sure the website has the right categories, of the GMB, um, we'll get you the replay. I'll get you, Peter, shoot me a message, Peter, and then I'll get you the replay because it might seem very minute or elementary, but maybe it'll give you like an aha moment or like, oh, okay, I didn't think of this. Um, getting that referral traffic, like Riz said, um, will also definitely help um, reviews. I've literally, I, uh, in fact, I'm, if you haven't looked at my Facebook, let me see if it's on there. I'll show you guys an example and see the area, the niche does matter. Um, Peter, let me see. I literally just did this example on just reviews. Let me see if she's posted it yet. Bum, 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 bum. I want to say yes, because she posted one. Maybe she hasn't or haven't given it to her. Let me bring up the example. Um, Ivory. Okay. Where is it? And give me a second when I bring it up for you. Um, where are you? My projects. Oh, here go my albums. And Riz, if you want to chime in here while I... All photos. Okay, here it is. Well, I guess it's just what we just spoke about earlier, really. Feel free to reach out to me directly if you want to get more in-depth chat. Uh, you know, if it's normally something missing in the process or not doing something enough if you're doing what it, if you're doing everything we spoke about then it's really just to sort of fine tweak on making sure that everything's done to what's needed for the campaign so here's uh, obviously i don't know the niche or the area right but literally nothing was done here we're just starting but this is just reviews when the reviews just kicked in and mind you this is from june 13 uh to july 3rd to july 19. uh junk callers not cleaning service if i said yeah junk removal service right so it's a pretty like so in the top 20 there were 91 now they're 109 
to 167 just off of reviews. And Riz was just talking about that. So this is a perfect example. I need to get this posted to my girl. But um, again, reach out to, to Riz, uh, myself. Um, Riz, I know, focuses on like the whole driving direction setup. He can get you squared away there for sure. But hit me up on Facebook. I'll shoot you the link of the video today. And um, that way you can review it and, you know, maybe give you some aha moments. And then um, Riz or myself can look at the actual profile more in depth, like where those holes are, what we think you should do to make a difference. But you see that. But again, now all of the cases, I don't have that many. It's only like a handful where I put reviews. You definitely see a jump. You for sure see a jump right now. And those reviews are sticking too, by the way. Um, but again, I don't know the niche, the area, what else, what other holes that we can do. But that that came to mind because it, it like literally, as you can see, it's recent, like it's a top of mind that we're looking at those and it's making a huge, huge difference. Any other questions as we wrap it up here, guys? Any last thoughts, Riz, that you have? Um, not, not really. It's slightly different episode today, I guess. Just count the wins. Um, it's, I mean, a lot of it's about client expectations. I mean, if you tell clients they're going to be getting millions of calls within a month and they're not, they're not going to be too happy. But if, if you can manage those expectations from the beginning and, you know, you, you always get extra leeway in terms of, the time that it takes to rank and the times that when clients start getting disappointed or concerned, all of that comes down to the framing initially. So do your research initially, check all the rankings, check what you need to rank, make a roadmap, figure out how much it's going to cost you and then build a monthly from there. So with that said, guys, um, Pete, I'm, I'm thinking the other, the Pete I'm thinking of, but just in case, um, this is my um, Facebook, and I believe Riz, you don't mind people reaching out on Facebook, right? No, definitely not. Feel free. Okay, so let me um, get you Riz's Facebook, guys. So if you guys want to reach out to him, um, you heard it here. He doesn't mind. Reach out to him. Um, He's helped a lot of the uh, GMB pros. Um, so I'm pretty sure he's more than willing to. Um, Always want to chat. Yeah, have a chat and help you out. There is Riz's right there. So um, feel free to, to hop on. Um, put your price, let me put mine in. Is that the wrong one? Oh, I didn't copy it right. Nice. I hate that. With my computer, it doesn't save it even though I hit the. The copy have to hit it twice. So perfect. You put it right on there. Um, so guys, with that said, I appreciate everyone's support. Those that are catching the replay. Um, basic, but I think powerful and meaningful. Um, so I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks with Riz. We have a couple of great guests coming up. I think you guys will be beneficial. A lot of tool, tool driven. Uh, but heavy lifting um, guests that we're, we're going to have um, hop on here soon. But with that being said, much love, much success, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Hey, guys. Thank you.